welcome to day five of the Diabetic Success Holiday Challenge. I'm just really glad that each one of you is here today. I'm glad that you got up early if that's what you had to do to be here. Um, but I'm really looking forward to what we have today. Cindy is going to be presenting to us today again. And before we get started, I just wanted to remind you that you've got that little chat box. If you've got questions, put them in the chat box. If for any reason you can't find the chat box, write your questions down on a piece of paper because we will have a Q&A at the end and we'll also be talking about homework after Cindy's presentation. And then we're gonna talk about what we're doing for the next two days. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and stop mm -hmm. sharing and turn the time over to Cindy. Thank you so much for being with us today, Cindy. All right, we're gonna start where we started yesterday with um, why what we eat matters and again what, what we eat is the one personal choice that we we have complete control over we can choose what we eat and what we put into our mouth and it's really a wonderful thing to have that freedom of choice because it is the one thing what we eat is one of the most um, one of the things we have the most control over that will affect our long long-term health uh, in a huge way so I've divided these strategies today into four different categories. And the first category is in the area of planning. And we've talked a little bit about this. Um, Lucia has mentioned before, make a plan and you guys are already working on your goals and your whys. And so um, the, the second strategy, and this is the second one to yesterday with a suggestion to eat beans at breakfast, is to make a plan before you get to the event. So. If there's an area or an, um, a particular situation where you know that it's going to be challenging for you to make good choices, before you get to that event, ask yourself some questions. And um, for myself, I really like the five W's, which is what, where, when, why, and how. I guess how is not a W, but anyway, <laughs> that's how I remember them. But um, you wanna ask yourself, okay, when is the event? What is going to be happening there? Who is going to be there? And who do I need to talk to before that event? And uh, at the basis of all of this is your why. And so we've already had a few days where we've talked about what is your why? Why do you want to be healthier? Why do you want to make better choices? Why does it matter what uh, you eat? And then um, how are you going to implement your plan? So a lot of times it comes down to communication and the willingness to talk to people before the event comes up. If it's a family gathering, perhaps you need to talk to the family and explain, you know, I'm having troubles with my blood sugars and I need to do a few things differently than normal and then see where the room is. Sometimes if it's a corporate event or a, um, a a church buffet or something, then then you have more control over what you're doing. But if it's some uh, another situation where maybe somebody's invited you out for a meal, that will require communication to make a plan before the event. Okay, stat strategy number three is decide in advance what you will and will not eat. Now this is um, to to explain what I mean by that. Um, I usually have examples that deal with chocolate because that happens to be my drug of choice. But um, if, you, if you wait until you're sitting in front of the double fudge chocolate cake with ice cream to decide whether or not you're going to eat that, you're most likely going to eat that. So it's really important to decide in advance what, what you will allow yourself and what you will not allow yourself in a situation where there's um, a lot of different choices. In that context, it's really important to know yourself and be realistic because very often, um, well, I'm not totally realistic and I think, oh, I'll be fine in front of the double fudge chocolate cake. But once I get there, I realize, no, I'm not fine. And I didn't realize that I was going to be this vulnerable. So it's really important to be realistic with yourself um, in that context. And at the same time, also realize that you do have freedom of choice. The real freedom is not to be in con not to be controlled by the food. In other words, you actually will be free when you can sit in front of the chocolate cake and not choose to eat it. That's real freedom. It's actually to be a victim to sit in front of the chocolate cake and just chow down because you don't actually have control there. So 
you want that real freedom, but there are consequences to those to that freedom and some of those consequences can be a little bit challenging to deal with so you you want to maintain your freedom and realize that there will be some consequences to that. And then another sort of principle in there with deciding what you will will not eat is to uh, consider the replacement principle. If you decide that you will not eat the, the double fudge chocolate cake, what will you replace it with? What can you do to provide yourself some kind of a um, treat, uh, some sort of an indulgent, but not that type? So you can re, um, and we'll mention this in a different strategy, but you can redefine what you will have for a treat. So you wanna replace something that's not so good with something that's better. So that's um, one of the things with that strategy. So strategy number four is to take your own food. So often that is the simpler way and simpler is always better when it comes to food. It's invariably the fact that when I make the simplest things, people will say, oh, this is so delicious, I love it. And then sometimes if I make a more complicated thing, people will be like, well, eh, it's okay, you know. <laughs> There's always, it seems like the people, people enjoy the simplest things and especially children enjoy simple things. So one of the things that um, I think is a real blessing is fruit. And you can make beautiful fruit platters. This happens to be um, a little more elaborate maybe than what I normally do with that carving there of the, the honeydew. But just cutting up fruit and the various colors and different shapes is very beautiful. And people love, love, love fruit platters and fruit bowls. So if you're going to go in a group situation and you know there's going to be a lot of desserts and the kinds of things that aren't going to be good for you, taking a beautiful fruit platter or some sort of uh, fruit bowl is a wonderful way for you to have a treat and other people really enjoy that as well. Um, this is another really interesting thing to take if you're going to be going out in a group and that's a relish tray because is you can literally make a meal on vegetables on a relish tray. And there's a lot of beautiful, neat, Pinterest worthy um, relish trays and fruit platters out there that you can uh, look at. This is what happens to be one that my, my mother-in-law who's pictured there in the red, she passed away in February, but she was absolutely a wonderful, artistic, beautiful cook. And one of the things that she would make just beautifully is fruit and vegetable platters. And she would take the them like if someone had passed away to the family she would take a big relish tray or a big fruit platter and people really really appreciated it and they were so beautiful and artistic that people that you know she was kind of known for that fortunately she did convey some of that to our daughter and so um that they just make beautiful fruit and vegetable platters and it's simple you do have to cut the fruit up and lay it out on a platter, but it doesn't involve a, a lot of cooking and things. And it's something that you can share that people really appreciate. And down on the bottom here is a picture of a fruit cake. Um, this was actually made for a friend of mine for her birthday. And the base of it is watermelon. And then around it is strawberries and blueberries and pineapple, kiwi and peaches and with a few um, candles. And it's actually a wonderful way to provide something special. Kids especially love these kinds of things, whether it's fruit or vegetable platters or fruit cakes, um, they, they appreciate it. You know, when children's taste buds have not been perverted by all the, the types of things that um, happen to be out there, they really appreciate simple food. And so like grandchildren and, and other children really enjoy having simple things to eat. Okay, strategy number five is um, one that can be useful. And again, you need to know yourself, you need to know what works for you, but um, to schedule your indulgence. In other words, if you're going to have something, uh, yesterday, uh, um, Lucia was talking about empanadas. She knows this is coming in her future. She can schedule that one indulgence up ahead and, and be sort of formulate your diet around it. Um, so it's important to know if you, like you can say, well, on Christmas day, I am going to have a small piece of pie or I'm gonna have you know, 
an empanada or whatever, and then make sure that the portion is is uh, matched to the to the need. Another thing to do is delay and procrastinate. It's one time when pro procrastination is good, and that is if you're going to be faced with um, <clears throat> different quote unquote, I'll call them treats, you may want to just delay. Like what, what at the first, when I was trying to overcome my chocolate addiction, um, I, I thought I might die if I didn't eat the chocolate. But what I found is I could delay it, I could put it off and I would still live till the next day or even the day after that. So sometimes if you're gonna have an indulgence, putting it off and um, scheduling it out in the future can help um, your taste buds adjust to where you're not so used to all the sweets that are um, typical over holidays. Um, and in that context is redefining an in indulgence. In other words, at this point in my life, an indulgence might be to eat a fig or a date. That's a really, I love like a date with an almond in it or a little bit of peanut butter in there. That for me is a real treat. But there was a day when you know a large Snicker bar wasn't quite enough for me. So I, your taste buds do change and adjust. And so one of the things you wanna do in this context is redefine what an indulgence is for you so that you know, it doesn't require um, double peanut buster parfait from Dairy Queen or whatever. Okay, so the next category is portion control. Um, and strategy number seven is join the One Bite Club. I have a sister who lost about 80 pounds recently. And one of the in interventions that she um, found very useful for her is the One Bite. She really likes desserts and sweets and those types of things. And she found that One Bite was quite sufficient. And so she would take her One Bite and she would savor it and take her time eating it. And that would be all that she would take. I think you have to know your personality. You have to know yourself. Um, for some people, one bite would be one bite too much and then they would take two and three and four until the whole thing was gone. So um, sometimes it's better to just say, no, I don't, I don't eat those types of things. But if, if the one bite club works for you, then that is one strategy to be able to have a taste and then be done. Another possibility is to join the quarter, third, or half portion club. Um, I just had the picture of my husband's parents there. They have split everything forever. So if they're, even now my father-in-law is staying with us, if, if he wants a banana, it has to be cut in half and shared with someone. He does not eat a whole banana. Or if it's an apple, he cuts it in half and he wants to share it with someone or even thirds so that we can each have a piece. So, and when he and, and Beverly would go out to a meal, they would split a, um, a dinner. So instead of eating the whole thing, they would eat half of it. So it's always a good idea to be able to um, have someone that you can share with or just in your own mind, if you go out, if you're getting a meal, eat half of it and save the other half for later or a third or a fourth, whatever works for you. Okay, so there's a really interesting um, study that was done at the University of Illinois um, on portion sizes. And many of you may have heard of the Super Size Me movement, the, the supersized uh, drinks and, and sandwiches and things that, that are so common in our world. And as a result, we are all supersized. So one of the things they found is that the larger um, dish that you eat out of, the more you will eat. And so, uh, you know, it used to be a 10 inch plate was a standard dinner plate. And then it went to 11 inch and then 12 inch. And now we actually have 14 inch dinner plates. You know, some of, some of the dinner plates that I've seen for Thanksgiving literally look like a platter. Um, you will totally eat more if you eat out of a large uh, container. So it's important to take a small plate and then question yourself whether or not you need to eat more. Most Americans are not eating from hunger these days. There's many other, and we've talked about a few of them, many other re reasons that push people to eat, but hunger is often not one of them. And so we need to take a small portion, eat it, and decide if we really need to eat more or not but always use a small plate, bowl, or cup. 
unless we're talking of water, then you can use a large cup. <laughs> but otherwise, small is always better and it will help you actually consume fewer and less calories. Okay, strategy number eight is really pretty important. Eat your salad first. And in that one, make sure that you, um, all of those bulky fibrous things that we're trying to eat, try to eat those at the beginning of your meal. Oftentimes casseroles and roasts and things that are higher in fat, perhaps higher in calories, but maybe less nutrient dense, they're actually easier to eat more, more calories than you actually need. So if you've eaten your salad first and you've had perhaps a sweet potato and maybe some vegetables, then at that point you can take a modest size of casserole or roast and you're not getting as many calories and you will actually um, be able to control your, your intake better and it's gonna be better for you. I put here also root stems and flowers. I wanted to talk about an um, experience I had recently with a lifestyle immersion where um, a lady came whose blood sugars had never been below 244 at home. And she runs between 244 and 400. And um, she, she was having a lot of trouble with her blood sugars, obviously. And the she, only reason she ever got down to 244 was she went on a 21 day cleanse. So um, we worked with her a bit. And one of the first things we did was we put her on root stems and flowers for about three days. And her, her blood sugar dropped to 115, which is still a little bit elevated, but it was amazing to see the, the uh, improvement in her blood sugars and the better balance that she was in just as a result of eating roots, root stems and flowers. And I would suggest if you're going to face a meal where you're going to have to eat more um, of something that you shouldn't or, or that's not the most ideal, then consider having a day when you eat root, root stems and flowers to bring your blood sugars back into a better um, a better alignment. And by the way, the root stems and flowers were for each meal. Um, she could eat as much of that as she wanted, steamed broccoli, kale, um, cauliflower, collards, um, just um, asparagus, you know, any root stems and flowers. So that's something that you can eat as much of as you want. It's not going to have a detrimental effect on your blood sugar and it can help you equalize if you're going to uh, face a meal where it's not um, totally ideal for your blood sugar. Okay, another strategy is if you're going to be facing a tough meal, eat an apple before going. Um, they've done studies and you'll actually eat less calories at a buffet if you eat an apple before you go. That's totally due to the fiber. So probably it would be similar if you ate a, a cup and a half of broccoli before you went, there might be some value there as well. But uh, the fiber in an apple is especially filling and it's um, really beneficial to do that. Um, if, it's, if it's really a meal that you shouldn't be eating and it would be better that you didn't and you're in a situation where you can get out of it, sometimes you can eat your whole meal at home and just go along to visit and um, enjoy the time with friends or family and not actually eat there. But that, again, you need to know yourself whether that would be something that would work and know your support group. Okay, speaking of support group, um, the next issue is accountability. So um, this is strategy number 10. If you can, it's ideal to get a food buddy, a coach, or a support group. Um, if you know of somebody, maybe it could even possibly be a family member if you've got a really supportive family member. Ideally, I mean, it would be nice if, if our husbands could be our support, <laughs> but it's not always the case. So if not, Finding somebody who will be supportive of you and encouraging of you and help you to make a good choices that you can call up if you're tempted to kind of go off half crazy, it would be nice to have somebody to be able to work with. And, and, it, and it's always nice to have a support group, a group of people that you can um, sort of talk together and brainstorm together because every situation is a little bit different and has different um, issues that we have to deal with. And so it's really nice to have a group of friends who are also perhaps other diabetics. There's diabetic support groups, there are health coaches. It's always just a really 
helpful thing to have a buddy that you can um, go through the process and the journey with. Now, strategy 11, um, what I have here is watch what you're telling yourself. I also thought about saying, be your own best friend. It's really important to be telling yourself the truth, not to be telling yourself, um, I'm being deprived or I don't like this or this is you know sort of negative self-talk make sure you you frame it to yourself as a positive i'm making this choice for my health and that's good also watch what you allow others to tell you whether it's advertising or on the television be aware that you want to be making sure as much as you can that you're hearing the truth about health um, and in that context strategy 12 strategy 12 is find resources that will continue to encourage you to make healthy choices, such as podcasts, blogs, books, any resources that will encourage you. My nephew and his family are going plant-based and he was laughing that it's taking a Dr. Gregor a day to keep him on a plant-based diet. So I think it's really important to have um, these resources at our fingertips. So if we're tempted to do things that are less than healthful, we can turn to somebody that will support that. Also watch what you're watching. If you're watching Paula Dean or the Pioneer Woman Cooks, probably you're gonna be getting ideas for cooking things that aren't going to be as healthful as opposed to if you're looking at Chef AJ or um, what's the one, Pick Up Limes. That's another really good one that has a lot of really nice uh, plant-based recipes. So be aware of what, what the inputs that are coming in. Okay, I wanna talk a little bit about synergy. Um, there's a synergistic effect with nutrition and any other lifestyle intervention. And so the more you can um, pile on there, the, the greater the results. Synergy is this idea that the combined effect of two or more agents is greater than the sum of the separate parts. And so what we want with lifestyle is to actually have the synergy between the nutrition and the lifestyle. And so there's a, a number of lifestyle hacks. We've talked about a few of them already. Get seven to nine hours of sleep each night. Drink a minimum of half of your body weight in ounces in water. More is better. Get daily exercise in the open air. Manage your stress and practice telling yourself the truth truth. These are things that need to be ongoing. And so in that context, there's a few strategies that I um, include here that are not just for the holidays, but really need to be something that you use all the time in your life. And so strategy 13 is be as regular with your meals as possible. Avoid skipping meals and avoid snacking. One of the things that happens when you skip meals is you tend to want to make up for it at the next meal. So it's really important to have your meals regularly, eat a balanced meal, and then avoid eating between meals. There, some diabetics have found some amazing, this woman that I was telling you about that has the, um, had the really high blood sugars, she found that intermittent fasting was helpful to her. So um, time restricted eating basically. So she would eat twice per day at seven and two, and then nothing any other time. And that really helped with her blood sugar control. So that may be something, if your blood sugars are really out of control, that may be um, useful to you. Um, also with the regularity, your body expects food at certain times of the day. And if you eat consistently at the similar time every day, your body will prepare for it by helping there to be some saliva in your mouth, your digestive juices start to flow, and it prepares to receive the food. But if you're eating at erratic times, your body never knows when the food might come. It, there's not that same regularity. And all of those digestive juice, juices and the saliva help your body to digest your food more effectively. Okay, strategy 14 is eat slowly, chew thoroughly, and take your time. I would also put there, don't watch TV while you eat or read a book or do some other distracting thing, but focus on actually eating what you're eating. Enjoy the flavors, take your time. Physiologically, you won't, don't even start to feel full until you've been eating for about 20 minutes, which means if you eat a lot, a lot of calories in the first 10 minutes, the chances of you overeating grow because you're not even going to feel 
um, you're not even going to start to feel full until you've been there for about 20 minutes. So taking your time and eat, chewing very thoroughly, thinking about what you're doing and just enjoying the process of eating, making it an event um, that actually has multiples of benefits. Okay, and then strategy 15, take a gentle walk after every meal. This actually has the same effect as giving you a dose of insulin. So by this, I'm not talking about a 45 minute workout type of thing. I'm just talking about a gentle 10 to 15 minute walk after a meal. They, uh, at New, New Start, they call them digestives. So have your digestive walk after your meal. It will help your blood sugars to be much more under control and um, you just feel better. It takes the focus off of uh, food and onto activity, and that is always beneficial for your health. Um, so make sure after each meal and every time you eat, you take a gentle walk. Okay, I wanted to sort of give a little testimony here. I mentioned earlier that I, I had a pretty strong chocolate addiction. I actually say I come from a long line of chocolate addicted people. I have many family members that are deeply chocolate addicted. They consider it, um, you know, part of the, the uh, part of the ways to live a long life is to eat chocolate. Um, so, but I realized that I had a, a distinct problem. I did not like the control that chocolate had in my life. I don't enjoy the feeling that the food has the control. I would like my mind to have the control, my decision to have the control. So I, I realized I had a problem and I started trying to, all the interventions, all the tactics to try to deal with this chocolate um, fetish that I had. And I, um, it, it was just not working very well. I was not very good at keeping, keeping it under control. And in desperation, I actually um, prayed and I asked God to help me with my chocolate addiction. And so um, thereafter, I, I kind of forgot about it. And there was a, a family birthday party and a Dairy Queen chocolate cake, whatever thing was, was given. And I don't know, I, I had already been battling this, but I, I don't know what came over me. I ate a huge piece. <laughs> and um, I ended up with an incredible headache. And someone, when I described the headache later to them, they said, oh, that's a migraine. Well, I didn't realize, um, I don't know if it was a migraine or not. It doesn't really matter. But what happened after that was I never again had a desire for chocolate. It was like it was gone from me. And I'm, I'm really thankful for that, actually, because to be able to look at a piece of chocolate and not be controlled by it is a really wonderful thing. And we each have our own little thing. Some of us have a fat tooth or a salt tooth or, you know, some of us have a sweet tooth. But sometimes it's, it's um, the food is in control and we need help. And oftentimes in, this, in situations of addiction, it is not something that we ourselves can control. We need help from above. And I would just encourage you that if something in your life is out of control and you need help, I would encourage you to pray. It is amazing that um, I believe we have a God in heaven who actually hears those kind of prayers and will help us to deal with, our, with whatever we're facing. And that includes not just addictions, but challenges within our our, our home and our family as well. So as Lucia always says, you can do it. And I would just encourage you to um, make a plan and control your portions and look for some support and um, trust God to help you to get where you need to be. Wow. That was amazing. We will talk about homework in a minute, but you can go ahead and stop sharing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Cindy. I, wow, wasn't that a powerful session? All kinds of tools for our toolboxes. I really appreciate that. I want to right now open it up for any questions that any of you might have uh, related to anything that Cindy shared before you forget about it. Um, let's take a look at that. Or if you have comments, either one. And then we'll, we'll go in and we'll do some of our 
like housekeeping and homework and, and some other things. I want to say um, when Cindy was showing us those beautiful platters, it reminded me that, you know, my mother has actually like made a thing of making wedding cakes out of fruit. And she even had like somebody build her this big three tiered thing that probably stands about two and a half, three, uh, about two and a half feet tall on a table. And then it has like a big round bottom and then each, each level is a little bit smaller. And even for my wedding, I actually wanted some cake for my wedding. Like I wanted to cut the cake, right? So we had like a carrot cake made for our wedding, but we, that favorite. was only uh, <laughs> my favorite on uh, one level. And then what she did on the bottom level was she just made this beautiful arrangement with like bunches of grapes and whole fruit and all these different colors. Um, and then we had the little cake on top and then she had like more like flowers and grapes and stuff on the top. And people really liked it. And she's ended up doing that for a lot of different people's oh, weddings. Wow. And they're just nice. gorgeous. I think the most recent one was for my aunt's 65th wedding anniversary. She asked my mom to make her an arrangement. And that was just about a year ago. And so my mom did like this mm -hmm. really nice arrangement with this big peeled carved uh, pineapple topper. It was really cool. Um, so yeah, there's so many things that you can do and, and get creative. I really, I feel bad because I, we, Lorely made hundreds of trays when we were in Weimar and we took pictures of them, but I couldn't find the pictures. Oh. There's so many beautiful, just creative things you can mm. do with those vegetables and fruits. That's really cool. I love that idea. Good. I hope that's helpful. Oh, great. <laughs> the one thing I couldn't do is join the club of taking one bite. For me, that's no. not good. No, no, that doesn't no. work for me either, but it worked mm -hmm. for her. And yeah. some people it works for and some people I, it doesn't. I have a girlfriend that can do that. And oh, yeah. I can't. I just got to stay away from it. But I, <laughs> yeah, I can bring uh, I can bring a, a treat like um, um, a hell, I forget what brand those are, but might be Luna bars or something that has a carrot cake oh, uh -huh. thing and it's just nuts and it has dates and you know, but it's healthy. And I'll yeah. bring that in my purse if I'm going somewhere and they're gonna have dessert. And mm, I'll yeah. eat that if I feel like I need to, right. because at least it's healthier, you know? Right, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that's good. Very good. Anybody else? Uh, seeing all that fruit there reminded me of something uh, a long time ago. My daughter is 41 now, but when she was five years old, for, mm -hmm. one, for her fifth birthday, I cut a watermelon just in half and just stuck the candles in it. Yeah, that's that was cool. her birthday cake, and that was her favorite birthday. And she looks back on it. Mm. Yeah, mm. see, I think kids really enjoy the simpler things. And when you know, when I have grandkids and stuff, and they just love fruit <coughs> as it is. In fact, they don't enjoy a lot of the mixed things that I think are more, you know, fancy or whatever. They don't want it that way. They, they just like plain stuff, and it's really nice to. Um, be able to, and, and a lot of adults do as well. I often take these types of things to church potlucks and people just swarm them, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My little grandson for his, he never liked cake. And mm -hmm. every year for his birthday, he wants grilled pineapple with cinnamon on it. Amen. And, <laughs> and that's what we have when we go there. And it's really good. Yeah. I've never even had grilled pineapple before, <laughs> but it was very good. Cool. Yeah. Great. So okay. Wendy, I see your question about D3. I, I question about D3. I, I, I would tend to agree that D3 is better absorbed than D2, but that's yeah. the question. Um, the question, okay. The question was, um, she was prescribed a D3 that has, um, K2 in it. Oh, with the addition. And it's supposed to absorb okay. into your system better. Have you heard of it? I haven't. No, okay. Sorry. I, I that's have, what I take. I can't see where it would hurt, but 
Right. And I will, I will actually do a little research on that because I have heard of that, but I haven't checked the research on that. So let me try and do that and um, see if I come back with anything more on that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. No problem. So I want to get some feedback from you all so far. How are you finding this challenge working for you? Are you getting useful things? Is it giving you um, oh, yeah. information that can help you go through the holidays with more success? Absolutely. Yes. I'm going to, if I get hungry, I'm going to eat beans. <laughs> Instead of, I'm to, to me, that's the best one. Like if we're invited out next Thursday for a surprise birthday party at the VFW, and I know they're going to have like steak or fish or and baked potatoes and stuff. And I thought I'm going to, I don't eat any meat or anything, but I thought maybe I can have the baked potato if I want, but I'm mostly going to eat before I go and just mm -hmm. visit you know and like I say if they have a birthday cake I'm just going to bring one of those little carrot cake bars that's healthy and have that mm -hmm. that's not going to be a problem then as long as like um Cindy said we just need to be prepared mm -hmm. if we go unprepared we will blow it yeah absolutely because we get hungry mm -hmm. yeah yeah and yeah. you know that's one so. of the reasons I'm so glad each of you have joined this challenge because that was my purpose my goal for this challenge was to give you tools that would enable you to be well prepared mm -hmm. and I, I really appreciate the presentations that Cindy shared with us because I think it's just given us a lot of really practical tools with which yeah. to do that yeah you know most people will not notice what you eat they, oh, no. they don't really care so if you don't make a big deal out of it and you're really just talking to them and and pulling them out like what's happening in your life and stuff they will never notice whether or not you're eating their food or not <laughs> Yeah, yeah. it doesn't really register with a lot of other people yeah true that's true and so you know here are like some really good tools to help you in that third step of gps that we've been talking about you have your baseline you have a destination you know what you're wanting to do over the holidays in terms of some personal goals and then here we're talking about like how do we actually do that setup how do we get from point a to point b successfully and some of those things cindy started talking about today we're like looking for a support system um, there are different ways that we can get support and we need to start thinking about what are the best ways to do that um, i'm going to be sharing some things with you on Tomorrow, we're talking a little bit more about some options that you can have for more support as you go through the holidays. So I want you to be thinking about what kinds of support you think you would find most helpful, not even just for the holidays, but any of us that are dealing with some of these long-term issues, we need to be thinking long-term. Like, what are we going to do even after the holidays so that we continue on this trajectory, this good path that we have started on um, or are continuing on? here. So I want to talk just a little bit about homework. Today's homework, we have a worksheet that Cindy put together where you can look at and write down so that you can remember it, you can post it on your refrigerator or whatever about some of the specific things you're planning to implement that are going to help you get through the holidays successfully. And then we also have a couple of like little short things for you to um, do. And one of them is that we would like you to pick a recipe that you can share at the holidays that is healthy and is going to help you meet your own goals, but something that other people can use. And to get you started on your worksheet is a recipe for hummus. Hummus is a garbanzo based dip that is awesome, like to go with a vegetable platter. And it's really easy to make. It's not complicated. You just like throw all the ingredients in a blender and blend it up. So that's really about all of the work there is to it. You just have to put the ingredients in. And you can get all of the ingredients at your local Walmart, grocery store, anywhere. Um, so that's one that you can start with if maybe you've never made it yourself. Um, we can also buy hummuses that are pretty decent at a lot of stores, but they're gonna cost you a lot more. So in the long run, it's gonna be very more economical if you are comfortable making it yourself. And it's a great addition to kind of your repertoire of uh, healthy blood sugar friendly recipes. The biggest thing you wanting to look for is making sure there's not too much fat in some of these recipes. Um, 
I'm also going to put up in the group today, by the way, your worksheet will be up in the group by quarter to eight today because it's already up there. It's just scheduled to show up. It'll pop up in the group at 745. So you'll be able to download it. Denise, I'll be happy to email that to you again. Did you get my email from yesterday? Yes, I did. But okay. my husband didn't get it printed off till this morning. <laughs> okay. So, I know that, I, I got by the it. time. Good, good. By the time I got it up, I was thinking, oh, at the time change, you've probably gone to bed. But okay. um, I'm glad you've got that. So yeah. I'm also going to put up in the group today um, a little handout that has some of my favorite Thanksgiving recipes. But I want to put out a little caveat with it. They are all plant-based, but not every ingredient is a whole food. And so they're like a little bit richer than anything you would want to be eating on a regular basis. Okay. But they're really um, crowd friendly, like oh, that's good. people and people just love them. And one of them is a holiday loaf. It's like a meat loaf, but it is amazing. It's really easy. It's really healthy. That's what I want. <laughs> it is not gluten free. So you just want to like, mm. remember that if you have somebody that can't eat gluten because it's kind I of can. a burger base. Oh, okay. Well, what this could one I replace? Is there something I can replace? Not in this recipe, um, mm -hmm. but we have some other loaf recipes um, that I can, I can work with you on to see if we can find something. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also like a tofu turkey. So that's, that's a tofu based. And mm -hmm. you can, if you make like a gluten-free stuffing, you can use it that way. Um, and that can be really uh, fun to do. I was on the meatloaf, the meatloaf one I've taken with the gravy, and I've taken that like to church potlucks, and these dyed in the wool carnivores just gobbled mm -hmm. it up. And they were like, wow, this is so good. So it's still something you can share, even if it's not something you maybe you could eat yourself. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I will put that little handout up in the group today sometime. Not sure exactly what time I'll get it up there. So just check. And I also wanted to let you know that I have a Facebook group called Vegan Recipes from the Harvest Cook. And I've been posting plant-based recipes that are fall themed, Thanksgiving themed in there. And like a new one's coming up every single day for like the next three weeks. So um, it's a private group. So just ask to join when you go to Facebook and I'll be checking in there today and tomorrow to make sure I let you in and you have access. And then you can go through there. I've been running the group for a while. So there's quite a collection of recipes. Um, read the, um, there's like a description of the group and some rules for the group. You'll want to read those when you get started. They're in the announcement section. Um, because I, and I'll, I'm also going to say it here with this group. They're not all my recipes that I post. I curate recipes to share. Um, that I find from a lot of different sources because people like different kinds of flavor combinations and different kinds of things. So I decided to curate. One of the things I have run into is that there's some like amazing plant-based recipes out there, but often they have one or two or three ingredients that I don't choose to use because I know they're not the best for my health. And I list those there in the group. And so it's like, even though I might post a recipe that has those ingredients, if I were to make that recipe, I will often either leave out or substitute one of those ingredients. And let me just run through a short list of those because this can be helpful for you too, as you like go on Google or go other places and are looking for recipes or even some of your favorite traditional ones that you want to make more healthy. Um, things that I will avoid are things like black pepper. I find that if I have a nice flavorful combination of herbs, I don't need black pepper and black pepper is irritating to the stomach. And so I don't want to eat all this healthy plant-based food and then add something that is not going to promote my health. So um, that's a piece that is missing in a lot of the plant-based and vegan recipes out there. So uh, um, another ingredient is um, any vinegars, balsamic vinegars, apple cider vinegar, different kinds of vinegar. I personally choose not to use vinegars um, most vinegars are irritating to the stomach. And so I just avoid them in general. Um, and I just replace the vinegar with lemon juice. In many recipes, the vinegar is used to react, for example, with the baking powder or something else that you're going to need to make the recipe work. But if you sub out lemon juice for vinegar in equal amounts, that tends to work in just about any recipe. Um, 
Another thing that will pop up sometimes is in vegan recipes, they may have too much processed food, like oils or sugars. And so I cut way back on a lot of those. Um, and I'll find that sometimes I can use sucanat or I can use coconut sugar in smaller amounts than they're calling for brown sugar or white sugar and um, avoid that. And then I'll also sometimes reserve those recipes for like specials, for treats, things I don't use as often if I can't just eliminate the most of the oil and the sugar. Because those are things we have to watch when we're having challenges with our blood sugars. So, um, so I just want to make sure you, everybody understands that as they go into the group. And I find that recipes, even if they have one or two ingredients that I won't use, the ideas can be extremely valuable. Sometimes even the way they present things, like how does it look like on the plate? Those give me good ideas of how to do things. And so I want to provide tools that work for people that are at many different points in their journey. And for some people, just getting the meat off their plate is a huge step. So, you know, my group kind of caters to people that are at many different places. It's not just a diabetic group. It's not, you know, just a whole foods plant-based where we don't allow salt or oil or sugar, you know, so that's, that's kind of where I'm coming from in this group. So feel free to join that. Um, I'm also planning to be doing some little live presentations in that group. So when you go in, turn on your notifications and set them to all. I will not be overwhelming your feed. Don't worry about that. Uh, um, but Facebook keeps going through and changing its algorithms and turns people's notifications in these groups off or, or turns them to like highlights only, which means you'll see about one in 10 things that post. So you want to make sure you set your notifications to all so you don't miss things because I don't. I don't post like five things a day in there. I just, I'm not that, and that's not how I run that group. So you, it's okay for you to turn on all and you're not gonna like see me in your face every 10 minutes. It's just not gonna be that way. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so um, those are some other sources for recipes to try as we are coming up um, on the holidays. And tomorrow we are going to be talking um, more about movement and how that helps us with controlling our blood sugars and how we can integrate that into our holidays. Um, and so you don't wanna to miss tomorrow. And our last challenge um, presentation is going to be on Sunday. And I had one other question for Cindy on the roots, stems and flowers diet <laughs> that you were thinking about people really needing to do something to control their sugars and drop them quickly. Um, I want to put in this caveat that if you're on any medications for your blood sugar and you go to a root stems of uh, flowers diet for any period of time, even if it's just one day, you need to make sure you're dealing, you're talking to your care provider and you're checking your sugars so that you don't over medicate because that can be very dangerous. And so I really, because this Thank is you. very effective at dropping blood sugars, if you're taking medications, you need to be really well aware of that. On roots, does that include carrots, beets, and potatoes, Cindy? No. no okay. It's, That's it's, what I wait. wanted to clarify. Oh. oh, you know what? I did that wrong. It should not say roots, stems, and flowers. It should say leaves, stems, and flowers. Ah, I am okay. so sorry. Leaves. Oh, I'm so glad you caught oh. that. No, 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 no roots. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry. Yeah, because uh, I was like, when I was thinking about it, I was like, mm, because usually carrots and beets and potatoes no, no, would no, be no. something you want to do. Totally not. No, it's it's leaves, stems, and flowers. Okay, so, so the leaves any, are? Spinach, kale, uh, you know, collards, whatever greens, types of leaves, anything in lettuce, romaine. Arugula, cabbage, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then stems, we're looking at asparagus, celery. celery. Asparagus. Um, I, you know, I suppose Swiss chard could be considered a stem. It's stem and leaf, isn't it? This stem got, and leaf. Uh, Napa cabbage has a lot of stem to it as well, for example, yeah. if like the, the ribs are, are really substantial. We and use then, mostly celery and asparagus. That's the two that okay. use the most for the stems. And then flowers, and flowers, cauliflower, broccoli flower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, Brussels sprouts. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not flowers. So those would be leaves, wouldn't they? Sprouts. Oh, maybe so. I thought they that's... were flowers. <laughs> they kind of look like little Rosetti flowers, <laughs> but I, I don't know. But it, it are still they're absolutely in that group. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I just want to make sure. Oh, I'm so glad you caught that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes, that's absolutely right. 
okay no problem no problem um and let's see if we have anything else any comments oh okay um wendy wanted to share a book that she says she's found a lot of good recipes that are easy and she uses quinoa instead of rice and that is a really great substitute too for a lot mm -hmm. of people that's a whole grain um and some people find that that's a kind of a lower glycemic index grain than rice so and it does give you a very kind of a ricey texture like you can mm -hmm. use it where you would use rice so great well it's higher Even in protein that too. The, the quinoa is higher in protein. So that's why it enters the bloodstream more slowly than the rice does. Well, again, you go. you're going to hit the, um, you know, like many books, you, you, you still have to do some substitutions that's like the, the lemon juice instead of the vinegar or maybe not so much oil. Um, and there are, you know, they have stuff with the potatoes and different things in there too. And what I like is, um, you could take just a little bit of them, freeze them up like the little balls of for like your meatball type stuff to put in and just like freeze four of them. That's what I did the other night. And that way I've got some portion control because <laughs> otherwise it would, it's just me. My husband is, is a carnivore eater. And um, so I have to make two meals. And so I try have to me have too. to um it's 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 difficult especially with the holidays that's going to be a difficult one for me um because um yeah just the smell of turkey and it just reminds me of family that we're not mm. going to be with and all that but anyway um i like this book and it's 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 not you can make your own um like tofu the cream cheese and all, it, it's really simple i mean i didn't know why i didn't think about it before but some of those things that i'm sure that lucy and sin Cindy have been doing for years, but <laughs> that way, this is one less thing you have to get at the supermarket. There you go. There you go. And it's um, cheap. Called Vegan on the Cheap by Robin Robertson. Mm -hmm. okay, so you, you know, and that's really brilliant. The idea, you know, as you're making things now, if you can freeze little individual portions to have for later, that's a really wonderful thing. I used to do this with my mother. I would make a batch of lentil soup and then I would, I would freeze it in one cup portions for her, which was just about what she wanted to have for a meal. And she would just pull that out. So any of those types of make ahead kinds of things are really good idea, especially over the holidays. Yeah. Okay. And um, we did have that video that was up there for you all to watch from Dr. Greger on the ketogenic diet and diabetes. Um, any takeaways or questions about that video? Was that helpful to you? Yes. I've seen, I, I think I've seen it before, but it was, it was good. And I wanted you to it's, it's kind of be armed with that resource. Mm -hmm. There's six of them, right? In that series on keto. Did you? See? Yeah, but I think only one of them was specifically in relation to diabetes. And okay, so that was the one that I put in the group because that is one of the areas where it's really, really being pushed even by a lot of medical doctors. They're putting their patients mm -hmm. on these ketogenic or really restricted low carb diets. Um, I think that on Sunday, one of the things that I want to talk about a little bit is the, the idea of vegan keto and uh, meal balancing for diabetics. Mm -hmm because we haven't really dealt with that specifically. And so we'll do that on Sunday. Um, so yeah, I'm glad and you guys got to see that. Yes, you had a question. Can I ask, um, like, how does the healthy fats play into the, um, into the diabetes? How does it affect diabetes? Like, you know, like avocados and olives and um, nuts and seeds. I mean, can you have a little bit of that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Everything you mentioned are whole foods. And right. that's the best place to get the fat portion of your calories in your diet. Okay. okay. Um, the things you're wanting to avoid are your processed fats, the margarines, the dressings, Absolutely. the oils, um, right. e even right. the quotes, good oils um, to really, really yeah. minimize. And we actually find that fats have a bigger impact on blood sugar levels than sugar and carbs. Mm -hmm. So, but I found out that I can water saute vegetables without using right. any oil Absolutely. and it works out fine. You just might have to add a little more water, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah, it works. <laughs> That's a super great strategy. And, it, yeah. and a lot, there's a lot of places where oil is added for either texture or flavor. I don't completely eliminate oil 
because I am able to control my blood sugars with very small amounts of oil. Um, mm -hmm. Some people cannot tolerate that, but I like the oil and I'll tell you where I use it. I use really small amounts as a flavor carrier. What it does is it mixes with the oils in your herbs and your spices that you're using to seasoning dishes. And it helps mm -hmm. to take that flavor through the dish. And so even a very small amount of oil can be a kind of a flavor enhancer that I really like the effect it has on taste because I'm really big on food tasting good. Okay, sure. Especially when you're sharing it with people that maybe um, completely make their choices based on taste rather than health. Sure. So sure. that's kind of where I will, when I'm going to use some oil, I'll use it where I know it's going to, I can have these other benefits for the dish not just to add oil to a dish. Right. And but so do you a lot have of things a, are oil free. Do you have a favorite um, oil? Would it be olive oil then? Or would it be a different kind? Or It a little bit depends on what I'm doing. I okay. will use extra virgin olive oil yeah. Um, yeah. in anything that um, doesn't take any high heat. Um, I will use a light olive oil if I need it in like a baked good where I don't want the olive oil flavor, like a dessert or a sweet thing. Okay. I will use avocado or grapeseed oil if it's going to be something that gets pretty hot. Okay. Um, like if sometimes if I'm using it to start my, uh, I do a curry and you have to like kind of roast the spices first, then I'll use like a little bit of high heat oil for that. But it's just a little bit and it ends up with this huge pot of curry. So it, it's not very much oil that you get in a portion. Um, I use coconut oil if I'm going to grease a pan. Or I, sp if I like the spray version the best because you can okay. don't need very much. Um, and if it's raw, like if I'm going to just put it on my salad I, I, and I'm like making it in part of a dressing, maybe with lemon juice or other things, then I really like to use flaxseed oil, but you never want to put flaxseed oil in something you heat. So I only okay. use it in things that are cold. Can you Thank clarify you. what you mean by a small amount of oil? When you mix it in with a dish, you're talking. A I'm talking a few teaspoons that makes 12 to 16 servings. I think that's important. Yeah, that, that's right. Because people's idea of what small is can really vary. I have seen people tell me, oh, I don't use much oil and I'm watching them cook and they just put a quarter cup in to saute their onions. Oh. And it's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm talking about like sometimes just even wiping a pan with an oiled paper towel or, or maybe one or two teaspoons to something that's going to feed my family for a meal or two. Right. So... Yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking at. In fact, I, I, even when I'm making for a crowd, it's rarely more than a tablespoon of oil in the dish. So. Well, that makes sense because oil has a lot of calories and it's not very filling, but to flavor things, I agree with you. That makes sense. Total. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No problem. Have you got a cookbook? Have you got a cookbook yourself? I actually have two cookbooks. Um, I oh, have wow. one that's called Flavors of Health and the other one is Beyond the Mask, which is my brand new digital uh, book of re immune boosting recipes. And I will give you links for both of those tomorrow. Oh, oh great, thank you. Okay, my um, Flavors of Health cookbook has like uh, breakfast and desserts and soups and breads and uh, you know vegetables and like all the different categories. And it is um, very whole foods focused. It does have some oil and some sugar in it. It's all plant-based. And um, it's a, it was a collaborative effort that my mom and I did together. Um, my mom's been doing cooking schools and cooking since before I was born, basically. So um, a lot of them are her recipes. And then I worked with her to put the book together. So some of the recipes are mine, but I would say probably the majority were hers, but they're really good people. You know, we've had lots of good feedback on them over the years. Um, nice. And that one is available both hardback, or it's not hardback, it's spiral bound, like paper okay. copy, or you can mm -hmm. get it digitally, either one. Um, my Beyond the Mask immune boosting one is currently just available in the digital version. But I figure a lot of people mm -hmm. like to cook like with their iPad in the kitchen or on their phone or whatever. And so it makes it easy for them to access the recipes in that format. So that's, that's what I've done with that. So yeah, I'll let you know how to get that tomorrow. So thank you, everybody. Um, appreciate you sticking thank around, you. even though we ran a few minutes longer today. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow in the morning. Thank you.